Think you know the legend of Bruce Lee? Think again. From his childhood in Hong Kong to his meteoric rise in Hollywood, Bruce Lee's story is more than just flying kicks and nunchucks. He was a philosopher, a martial arts innovator, and a cultural icon who shattered barriers. In this video, we'll delve deep into the life of Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee's legacy continues to inspire millions worldwide. So buckle up and prepare to be amazed by the remarkable life and enduring impact of the one and only Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee, born on November 27, 1940, in San Francisco, California, entered the world during a one-year tour of the United States by his parents, Bruce and Grace Ho. The Lee family, then consisting of six members, returned to Hong Kong in the early 1940s. Bruce's introduction to the entertainment industry came early as his parents engaged him in acting around 1946, marking his first credited role in The Birth of Mankind. Over the 1950s, he went on to feature in over a dozen movies. During his teenage years, Bruce Lee's pursuits were diverse. Alongside his involvement in acting, he delved into dance, ultimately becoming Hong Kong's Grand Colony Cha-Cha champion in 1958. Despite his achievements, Bruce exhibited a rebellious side, joining a gang and participating in street fights. It was through these experiences that he began studying the art of combat, analyzing various fighting styles and techniques. Bruce dedicated himself to honing his skills, studying Kung Fu under Ip Man. At the age of 16, he was a diligent and hardworking student, once even tricking his classmates into leaving, allowing him a unique one-on-one -on -one session with Ip Man. When Bruce turned 18, he made a significant move to the United States. Legend has it that this decision was influenced by an incident where Bruce allegedly beat up the son of a dangerous triad family, prompting him to seek safety in the United States. According to his younger brother, Robert Lee, a police officer warned their father that Bruce could face jail time if he continued fighting. Regardless of the specific reason, it was clear that Bruce's lifestyle was leading him into trouble, prompting his relocation to the United States for a more productive and peaceful life. After completing high school in the United States, Lee enrolled at the University of Washington. To sustain himself financially, he opened a kung fu studio known as the Yoon Fungan Fu Institute of Seattle in 1960. The institute remained active as a school until 1967. In 1964, Lee married Linda Emery, and the couple moved to California. They had two children, Brandon in 1965 and Shannon in 1969. This move turned out to be fortuitous, as Bruce secured the iconic role of Cato in ABC's The Green Hornet. Although the show and his role gained iconic status later, during its initial run from September 1966 to March 1967, The Green Hornet wasn't very popular and was canceled by ABC after just one season. Following this, Bruce opened two new martial arts studios in California one in Oakland and one in LA. In these schools, he imparted his unique fighting style known as Jeet Kune Do, or the way of the intercepting fist. Bruce's philosophical mind influenced the development of this style as he documented his beliefs in copious notes in a journal. His philosophy emphasized being formless and shapeless like water, adapting to various situations. Bruce often coded, empty your mind, be formless, shapeless like water. You put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. Although the Green Hornet was considered a failure, it played a crucial role in introducing Bruce Lee to an American audience. Advised to capitalize on his newfound fame, Lee decided to teach Kung Fu to Hollywood celebrities, charging a significant fee of $150 per hour, or $500 for 10 lessons. He provided instruction to A-list stars like James Coburn, Roman Polanski, and Steve McQueen, whom Lee regarded as his greatest student. Despite having notable clientele, this period was challenging for the Lee family. 
teaching kung fu wasn't sufficient to cover their expenses, and Bruce struggled to find acting opportunities. In these tough times, Linda, Bruce's wife, took evening jobs to help support the family. The situation worsened when Bruce suffered a severe back injury during exercise, leaving him incapacitated for several months. However, a trip to Hong Kong with his son Brandon turned out to be incredibly fortunate for Bruce. The Green Hornet had gained immense popularity in Hong Kong, making Bruce a national celebrity. Recognized on the streets and invited to showcase his skills on a variety show, he used his newfound popularity to secure a two-movie contract. Under the distribution deal with Golden Harvest, Bruce Lee received a payment of $15,000 for two movies, which later became the iconic films The Big Boss and Fist of Fury. These movies catapulted Bruce Lee to superstardom in Hong Kong, prompting him to establish a production company named Concord Production Incorporated with Raymond Chow. Concord Production produced The Way of the Dragon, a film written, directed, and starring Bruce Lee. The success of these projects caught the attention of Warner Brothers, leading to an agreement with both Concord and Golden Harvest to collaborate on a new movie titled Enter the Dragon, released on August 19, 1973. The movie became an instant classic and contributed to the martial arts craze of the 1970s. Regrettably, Bruce Lee did not live to witness its success. Bruce Lee's health started to deteriorate in May 1973, experiencing seizures and headaches. On May 10th, during an ADR session for Enter the Dragon, he collapsed and was rushed to the hospital, diagnosed with cerebral edema, brain swelling, at UCLA Medical Center. Doctors found no clear cause, granting him an otherwise clean bill of health. Bruce Lee returned to Hong Kong to plan his next movie, Game of Death. In July 1973, Bruce visited Taiwanese actress Betty Ting's apartment, feeling unwell and lightheaded after taking some equigesic given to him by Ting. While hoping to sleep off the sickness, Bruce Lee tragically died in his sleep on the evening of July 20th, 1973. The coroner identified another cerebral edema as a cause of his untimely death. Two months later, forensic expert Donald Teer, assigned to Bruce Lee's case, asserted that Lee had a hypersensitivity to the drug given to him by Betty Ting. Raymond Chow, the co-founder of Concord Production Inc., shares this opinion, stating that Lee died from an allergic reaction to methocarbamol, the active ingredient in equigesic. Bruce Lee's legacy endures and he is recognized as one of the quintessential martial artists. Time Magazine named him one of the 100 most influential people of the 20th century. Various statues in his honor have been unveiled worldwide, including in Hong Kong, Mostar, and Los Angeles. Filmmakers like Quentin Tarantino continue to honor Lee's legacy, featuring him in movies like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, portrayed by actor and martial artist Mike Mo. However, this portrayal faced criticism from various public figures, including Bruce Lee's daughter Shannon. She expressed that Bruce was consistently marginalized and treated poorly by white Hollywood, which she believed was reflected in the film. Bruce Lee is survived by his wife, Linda Lee Cadwell, and his daughter Shannon. Unfortunately, his son Brandon passed away in 1993 due to a tragic accident while filming The Crow coinciding with the 20th anniversary of his father's death. So, have you gained a new appreciation for the depth and complexity of Bruce Lee's life? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you like this video, click the next one shown on the screen. I'm sure you'll like it. Thanks for watching.